Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Roger Testrudi. And as you know, every month we seek to bring another department, department program, to give you a better feel for the roles and responsibilities of your county government. And generally every month we have a, a department head here who gives an overview of their role and the department's role. And this, this program, I'm pleased that we have a new face amongst us. Uh, many of you knew Chuck Mayer. He was our Sheboygan County Airport Manager for 25 years and in fact was with Sheboygan County for 41 years. Well, Mr. Tom Boyer, who is now our Airport Superintendent, has been with us for about 41 days and we're really <laughs> pleased to have Tom aboard. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Glad to be here. We recently are, frank, and frankly, we're in the midst of a consolidation in Sheboygan County. We've consolidated, streamlined a number of areas over the years, and the most recent one that Chairman Testrudi and the County Board is considering is consolidating our highway department with our airport department to create a transportation department. It really isn't going to change a tremendous a lot, amount of work out there, what needs to be done, but Tom now will, in all likelihood, rather than being a standalone department head working with Greg Schnell. And again, Tom, we're, we're glad to have you aboard. We know you're not a, a new face to Sheboygan <laughs> County. Please begin by sharing a little bit about yourself and, and your role and responsibilities as airport manager. Love to, but I've been flying for about 34 years now. In fact, I have my private license out of here uh, with Cliff Berry back in 1981 out of Sheboygan. Uh, so no stranger to it. Um, also worked for the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics for a number of years. I was also a corporate pilot for the Kohler Company for about four or five years as well. I uh, ran a business on the airport, Western Shore Aviation as well, so uh, yeah, no stranger to uh, Sheboygan Airport, so glad to be here. Oh, it's good to have you aboard. And when specifically did you start and what's your impression been thus far in your new position? Well, as you said, about 41 days, real close to that. And uh, I, I hope to have 41 years in like Chuck and, and, and have the experience and the uh, the great job that Chuck did. I hope to have that as well 41 years from now. Uh, but my experience has been great so far. Um, everybody at the airport has been very welcoming. Everybody at the county has been very welcoming. And uh, it's a great airport to be working, working with. And I can't wait to keep doing, improving the airport. Well, please set the stage for us a little bit. How yeah. long has the county had uh, a county airport? And tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, actually the, the airport was built in 1958, construction started. Uh, it was finished in 1960, and then in 1963 or 62, Chaplin Aviation took over and ran that. They managed the airport until 1987 when Harry Chaplin retired. After that, then the county took over and uh, has been running the, the airport ever since at that point. So. Okay. And size, overall uh, facility, what, what's the airport all contain? All right, total size, it's just over 1,000 acres. Now, inside the fence area is about 737 acres. Outside of that, another 300 outside for uh, air rights and that sort of thing. Um, it's a very big airport in, in terms of uh, real estate is concerned. And I see you brought a, a nice photo along I did, today. Yeah, I did. Do you want to just give a little overview of the layout? What sure, you, absolutely. If our camera can zoom in there. You bet. And you can see um, it, it takes up, again, uh, over 700 acres in our fenced-in area. Our main ramp area right here and right here. Uh, where if you came to a Wings and Wheels event, you probably noticed that this whole area up here was covered with uh, corporate aircraft coming in for events at Road America. Uh, that's not uncommon in the summer to see that, especially with the golf events as well. Uh, we have two crossing runways. The white one here, the main one, is runway three and two one. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, and its extension project that it had done on it. And of course, we have runway one, three, and three one, which is our crosswind runway. Uh, we have area over in this area here for private tenants uh, with their own aircraft. And this area over here is more for the industrials, the uh, corporate, corporate aircraft as well. And just at the county board meeting Tuesday night, uh, we had the chance to honor Chuck Mayer for his years of service. And Roger Testrudi and I were commenting yeah. how when he started as the airport manager 25 years ago, I think there were three <laughs> uh, tenants there, and now we have closer to 50. Yeah, actually about 34 private, a dozen corporates, uh, commercial operators as well. Uh, we've got, um, as far as the commercial operators, we've got, of course, Burroughs Aviation, which is the fixed-based operation out there. 
Uh, we've got Airworthy Aviation. Uh, Airworthy is uh, aircraft maintenance. If you need maintenance on your aircraft or inspection done or annual inspections done, uh, they're the people on the field that you go to for that. Uh, we have Hertz rent cars out there as well. Um, of course, we've got the uh, uh, Final Approach Restaurant, and we've got uh, the Aviation Heritage Center, which is located right in the middle of the ramp area. And, and again, for Wings and Wheels, that's where you had the pancake breakfast, that big building. Uh, also for, or for banquet facilities as well. So it's a fantastic facility to have right on the main ramp itself. Excellent. So yeah. with all this activity mm -hmm. going on, tremendous airport, a lot of expansion over the years, you mentioned about a hundred or what a thousand acres yeah over a thousand uh, acres fenced yeah. entire you must have just a huge staff to work <laughs> with Tom could you could you touch on the number of employees that work with you and then also what your operating budget is sure right now we're looking at you know, probably the smallest of the 20 departments in the county but in terms of real estate I believe we might be the biggest in terms of real estate and like you said our, our uh, people that we have working for us, we have three, three full-time staff, myself and then two others that do maintenance. And when, when it starts getting in the busy season, snow season with snow removal or in the summer with grass cutting, then we will bring on an LTE uh, to help out as well. But all that maintenance uh, just done by two maintenance techs and myself. Yeah which is, I know we've held the line with staff for a number of years, even with a tremendous growth out there. Right. You mentioned we do have a fixed-based operator, a line of work used to be in. They obviously have an important role, responsibility. How does that, what is their role? Uh, to many of the corporate operators, the FBO operator is the face of, of, the, of Sheboygan County Airport. Um, when they pull in, that's what they see is Burroughs Aviation. So again, that's, that's what their impression is of the airport. And if you think of an FB or, or an operation like that, it's one-stop shopping, uh, full aviation services for, for, for corporate aircraft. Uh, they do aircraft fueling, uh, catering, uh, laboratory service, that sort of thing. Um, you know, they might make hotel reservations, rent a car reservations for the crew, and sometimes the, the people that they're carrying as well. So again, it's, it's one-stop shopping for all aviation services for corporate aviation. And how busy is our airport in comparison to others? You know, that's an interesting question. They, the state of Wisconsin splits up our 98 public airports into four different categories. Uh, there's, of course, the large uh, uh, commercial airports, the Appletons, Milwaukee's, Green Bay's, Madison, that sort of thing. There's eight of those. There's the next category is considered large general aviation, which is where we fall in with 14 other operators as well, 14 other airports. In that 14, we're right in the middle about uh, seventh in that group as well. Um, what does that mean uh, in terms of operation? Uh, right now we're, we do approximately between 55 and 60,000 flight operations per year um, between the corporate operators, the general aviation airport airplanes, the student pilots out there as well. It totals up pretty high actually. Outstanding and final mm -hmm. question before I turn it over to Roger and you touched on it briefly. What kind of tenants do we have at the airport? I, I think some people might be a little surprised to know just how important the tenants are to our local economic development. Absolutely. We touched on the commercial operators uh, just recently with Burroughs and of course with all the other ones. Uh, there's 34 private tenants out there with their own hangars and their own aircraft. Uh, and right now there's about 12 industrial, what we call industrial, and that would be uh, companies like Kohler and Windway Capital Corp. Richardson, Bray and Associates, and Bemis, that sort of thing. There's about 12 industrial tenants out there as well. So Excellent. quite a few. So important, obviously, they see the growth and, and that we're able to accommodate their needs because Absolutely. everyone's flying, it seems like, larger and more expensive aircraft than they were years ago. Yeah, and actually a, a new addition to this would be uh, Lakeland College just got added to this, to this mix just last year. Um, they've teamed up with Frontline Aviation as another commercial operator. They give flight instruction at the airport. Uh, they're based out of Green Bay, but they run a satellite operation here at the airport. They partnered with Lakeland College to have a four-year aviation degree with a minor in, in aviation here at the airport. What's fascinating is a person can walk off the street and start and literally end their career here at the airport. You could start taking lessons, get a bachelor's degree right at this airport, and literally, if there's an opening, you could work for a corporate operator and end your career at this airport itself. To me, that's just outstanding that you can do that. You know, it's very rare to see that at airports these days. So. I've come a long way. Excellent. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Uh, in addition to upkeep and maintenance responsibilities, your department takes an active role in capital
projects. Uh, Tom, uh, please tell us uh, about the airport long range capital improvement plans and the process. The process is, is uh, something that Chuck had spent a lot of time just really improving. Um, and how that works is uh, the airport master plan, which is more of the blueprint for the airport itself, was updated back in 1996. Um, and you think of the master plan as more of a strategy for short, mid, and long-term planning projects that we want to do at the airport itself. Again, that has to be updated. And uh, again, we use that as a guide for continual improvement and modernization of the airport itself. Um, from there, then, we also had to do um, environmental and economic impact studies. The environmental studies, of course, you know, any project that we're planning, what's going to be the impact on our environment? And if there is going to be an impact, what's going to be the mitigation strategies we're going to use for those as well? Uh, then we also have to do impact, economic impact study. You know, is it going to be worthwhile doing these projects? What's going to be the benefit to the county in terms of uh, economy for them? Um, those studies have to be completed. Um, once, because we have done that so well, um, we then, we, at that point, we petition the Bureau of Aeronautics uh, down in Madison, who is the project manager for most of our projects. We get into their planning cycle as well. And then from there, we, we get our projects approved. Um, as far as um, um, the county is concerned, what we do then is take those projects and put them into a five-year capital planning process, which we've been doing, I think, for 25 years out here now, 26 years we've been doing that. So, yeah. uh, Who provides uh, input and guidance to, uh, to the department? Well, I tell you, it takes a village, and it's something you cannot do by yourself, or certainly I can't do by myself. So I, I get guidance from the Sheboygan County Transportation Committee. It's a five-member committee uh, made up of uh, uh, board members of the county. Um, I take my guidance from them. We also have a nine-member airport advisory committee, and those are made up of tenants on the field and, and uh, in, or leaders in the community here in Sheboygan County. Um, and they deal with matters uh, of the airport, for the airport itself. And they, anything that might get referred to the airport advisory committee, that means the transportation committee is looking for advice on how to handle certain matters. They then give advice to the transportation committee. And again, that's who I, I really, uh, I really listen to his transportation committee. Then, of course, the county administrator as well, providing him with any information he may need for better decisions. And uh, what are some of the most recent improvements that have been completed at the county airport? Well, I tell you, if you go back to 1960, when this airport was built, first built, our long runway, the white one that we showed you right here, the longer one, uh, was only 3,600 feet long. And at that time, you really weren't thinking some of the long-range transcontinental airplanes that you had right now. Uh, just a couple years ago, that runway itself, the long runway, was extended to 6,800 feet long. The length is nice, but we wanted to make sure that there, it could take those longer, the weights of the bigger aircraft. That airplane is now, or that runway is now stressed uh, to 98,000 pounds. Uh, so it's a very thick amount of concrete. And we had to do that because of the requests from our users for the, the longer range aircraft. As a matter of fact, even today, I got a request of a person that uh, wanted to bring a plane in coming in. He'll be leaving Sheboygan with full tank of gas going overseas, and he was concerned because his plane was 97,000 pounds. So, of course, our runway can certainly take that now. Um, also, along with that runway, it wouldn't make sense to have a 100,000-pound runway if your taxiway couldn't support that. So the parallel taxiway to get you out to the end of that runway was also uh, improved to have the increased bearing capacity to 100,000 pounds as well. Um, so that's taxiway F. About two years ago, our crossing runway, the black one here, runway 3113, uh, that was also strengthened with an increased bearing capacity. That one at the time, back in 1960, again, could only take about 36,000 pounds. It's been stressed now to hold 76,000 pounds, an increased length of 5,000 feet. And if you think about it, in most airports in Wisconsin, a, a long runway for most of these airports is 5,000 feet long with 76,000 pounds. That's our shortest runway right now. So uh, we're, we're at a great advantage right now. Um, and what are some of the uh, projects uh, you're working on now? 
Well, right now what we're going to be working on is engineering this year and the construction for next year of, if you can see here, this darker portion of our main ramp. Again, if you're at Wings and Wheels or have been in the past, it's usually where the smaller planes are parked right out in front of the Aviation Heritage Center, that black piece of asphalt. That asphalt has been around since the airport was constructed, so it's over 50 years old and of course its bearing capacity has has failed it and it does need to be replaced so that will be it's on the books for next year we'll be replacing that um, I had mentioned before that our crossing runway runway 13 and 31 um, was also increased and its load capacity increased that taxiway paralleling, paralleling that will be replaced in 2014 so. and how about some uh, describing some of the projects that you're going to be working on in the next few years or contemplating working on how we secure funding for that sort of thing. As I mentioned before, um, our airport, as far as the Beer of Aeronaut is concerned, is, is really looked upon as more exemplary. We have really got our things, our, our projects together. And what I mean by that is our airport master plan is updated continuously. It's a requirement for federal funding. Our airport layout plan is updated. Uh, our economic impact and our um, environmental studies are always up to date and always ready at a moment's notice. Because of that, um, whenever we petition the Bureau of Aeronautics for funding, usually we get right into their program cycle. And when the time comes for them to determine what projects or prioritize their projects, we are usually right on the top of the list. There's no delays getting our projects done or our funding done as well. Just to give you an example, most of these projects, almost all these projects out here are funded uh, by the FAA 95%. 2.5% to, to the state, 2.5% to the state, two and a half percent to the county. So to put that in perspective, if a million dollar project out here at the airport would only cost the Sheboygan County taxpayers $25,000 for that million dollar project, that's pretty good. Uh, there still is an investment uh, from the county taxpayers. Uh, what mm -hmm. kind of economic benefit are people in the county getting back from that? You bet. Our, our last economic study uh, was, was done just a few years ago. In fact, we need to update that in the next couple of years. Uh, just looking at some of the statistics from that when I looked into it, um, let me just give you some information here. Again, they look at the economic impact uh, directly and indirectly, the effects of this airport on the state and local economies. Uh, what they showed was the airport, Sheboygan County Memorial Airport, provided $27 million in state and local uh, sales, that's indirect and direct, supported 291 jobs in state and locally, and also 10 million in wage income on a state and local level. That's outstanding, actually, for, for an airport this size. So that's, that's pretty good. Well, you certainly have covered a lot of ground in a short period of time, <laughs> and, and as we've talked about the, the airport and all the improvements that have been made, as you know, we had 9-11 come our way and a lot of security yeah. issues and concern and and what has happened at the airport you know the last decade or so to really improve their our safety and security absolutely yeah and, and safety and security is a, a big thing at this airport and again part of our duty as is at airport administration is to make sure this airport is maintained and operated 24 hours a day seven days a week uh, as you've probably seen at the airport it's, it's not just Cessnas and Pipers flying around. These are international planes going international from this airport and to this airport. So this airport has to be maintained and secured 24 hours a day. And part of that was the fencing that goes around. There's 6.3 miles of fence that goes around this airport. And when it was first put in, it was simply just to keep animals out and keep wildlife away. Uh, prior to that, we didn't have a fence, and we had issues with deer. So, yeah, we put the fence around it. In fact, on the outer edges, the outer parts of the airport, there's about 17 gates. Okay. On the terminal area, where all the tenants are, there's about 18 gates. And in the past, we always had uh, access gates you could just drive your car up to and the gate would open and go through. That was prior to 9-11. Again, we weren't, concerned with, you know, weren't as concerned with security as we, as we are now, of course. After 9-11, uh, Homeland Security has been a tremendous funding source for us and has beefed up that gate with uh, barbed wire fence. Every one of these gates now uh, for passengers to go in and out are key fob access only. So because of that, we can track exactly who's coming in, at what time they're coming in or leaving. Also, each one of the gates has uh, video surveillance and, and recording going on it as well. So that was all through Homeland Security that we can track that. So that's also going on. 
tremendous amount of improvement and certainly that all has expense associated with it because you need to maintain that fence and maintain those gates and I know Absolutely. we were just at a transportation committee the two of us a month or so ago talking about repairing one gate for the cost of twenty five thirty thousand dollars correct this is yeah. not inexpensive security infrastructure that's no. one of what thirty gates you just mentioned and as we said the uh, the main ramp that's going to be reconstructed next year part of that will be also increasing or, or, re or replacing four gates and those I believe that was around one hundred twenty thousand for those four gates alone so you, so you mentioned the fencing, the enhanced higher fencing with the barbed mm -hmm. wire, the gates, the, the fobs, the surveillance. What about as air traffic is just coming and going? How's that monitored? You know, and this is a nice thing about Sheboygan. Uh, we are considered a non-towered airport. Now, we don't have a control tower. And this is one nice thing about Sheboygan. I heard this recently from a corporate operator. He flew in here recently, and he looked around the airport, and he said, you know, this is a very big airport, but it feels so small. In other words, what he meant was it's got every amenity any large airport would have. Long runways, great instrument approaches coming in, uh, very nice uh, stressed runways to handle bigger bigger or larger aircraft. But when you land here and start talking to everybody, it's, it's got a nice small town feel to it. Still does have that. He still sees Cessnas and Pipers and student pilots flying around. And it, what's interesting is we are considered non-tower. We don't have a tower here. All of our uh, coordinating is done through uh, just use of radio and standard procedures, standard accepted FAA procedures that have been around for decades. Uh, only about 12 airports in Wisconsin have a tower control. The rest are non-towered. So again, any procedure we do, it's done through uh, coordinating between ourselves in the air with the radio and, and relying on standard procedures for entering and exiting the airport. That's about 99% of the time. The 1% of the time, we do bring a temporary tower in, and that, of course, is for any major sporting event, uh, say, for instance, the PGA or USGA events going on at the golf courses in the area. In that case, then, because of the increased traffic, then we will bring in a temporary tower with the FAA. Uh, we locate a tower on the west side of the airport. There's a little pad that we actually roll a tower, a control tower in. It's a small little thing, but uh, with FAA-approved traffic controllers, we have procedures in place for getting in and out of this airport for those major sporting events. Again, so that's the one time that we will have a tower control going on at that time. And it only makes sense because when we have those major events, uh, this main ramp will be completely full and this, ta this runway usually gets shut down to park planes on the runway. That's how many airplanes will get here for a major sporting event. So you can see the increased need for, you know, for traffic control. And most of our viewers have never been a pilot. Yeah. Uh, perhaps most have been in an airplane, but uh, for those who have never been a, a pilot, self-included, give us a sense of, well, how does that work? You're approaching the airport. Sure. Who are you talking to, and when do you know it's clear to, to land and, and to depart? Sure. It, you know, I always looked at it like coming into a small town when you just have stop signs. If you came up to a four-way stop and all four people are staring at each other, we have a certain procedure. Maybe the person to the right is going to go first, or whoever arrived first gets to go through first, through that inter intersection. Honestly, it's not that much different in, in the sky. When we arrive at this airport, usually 10 or 15 miles out, or even more, we've been listening. We have a radio frequency that transmits all the information about the airport, the, the direction of the wind, um, the, the height of the ceiling or the, cloud, the clouds, uh, visibility, that sort of thing. So we already know what runway we're going to be trying to land on. Um, about 10 or 15 miles out, we will start radioing our intentions to the traffic in that area on a certain frequency. Other traffic are monitoring that frequency as well. So when I announce my intention to come and land, other airports or other airplanes usually get on and just start saying, hey, I'm in this position, where are you? Well, I'm, I'm over in this position over here. Then we start working it out who will get in first. Uh, larger aircraft itself are moving much faster, so we have to make, you know, we accommodate that as well. But a lot of it's just done through um, those accepted procedures that we, we have with the FAA. They have certain procedures and a certain pattern that we have to fly at these airports and a certain altitude that we have to fly as well. So we adhere to those standard procedures. But again, when traffic gets so congested, at that point, yeah, then we bring a control tower in and then the controller will do that directing for us. It's kind of like going to a bigger city when you have a traffic cop standing on the side of an intersection. He'll let you know when you can go. Excellent analogy, excellent analogy, very good. So uh, as a pilot mm -hmm. and now as an airport 
superintendent, um, are you still going to get an opportunity to get out there and fly and utilize well, the airport from that vantage point from time to time? I'm actually also a designated pilot examiner. Now, what that means is if you've ever taken your driver's tests and you have to go to the guy at the DMV that gives you your test, I do that for pilots. Okay. <laughs> so I'm the guy you go to when you take your test. Okay. Or I'm one of, the, one of the few people that can in the state. So I still get a chance to go fly. So, and I, I've been flying corporate and work with Midwest Express for a few years, and so I, I've flown bigger aircraft. But it's still a thrill to get into a small airplane with a student pilot and I still remember that 34 years ago, taking that lesson and taking that, getting that license with that examiner sitting next to me. So I still get a chance to go fly with them and, and do that sort of thing. It's a lot of fun. Actually. Nice, so, nice. Yeah. Well, we only have a couple of minutes remaining. And I, on the onset, I mentioned that we're you know, about to embark on a yeah. consolidation here. And of course, you're on the, the front line of that and working with Greg Schnell, our highway commissioner, to work through that. And mm -hmm. of course, anytime we consolidate, it doesn't happen magically. It takes people to work toward it and right. determine what the pros and cons are. What do you see thus far uh, as be benefiting the airport and the county as a result of the consolidation? What are some of the good things associated with it, other than the savings, of course, because there will be some savings associated with it. You know, I, I think it's a natural transition. I think it's a natural thing that should happen. If you, look at the, if you look at this airport and look at the expansion that's going on, again, look at these airplanes that are coming in here. Okay? The longer runways means more maintenance, the, the more grass, more plowing, that sort of thing. We're no longer just stand alone by ourselves we will need the assistance of a highway department. And that's where it can come in handy for us. We want our operators seeing seamless, you know, seamless transportation. We don't want them having slowdowns because we couldn't get run or getting the runway uh, snow removed. So if one of right. our pieces of equipment breaks, we can certainly just call the county. We have those resources now for trucks or, or personnel that can help us plow that runway quick. Uh, cutting grass and maintaining that airport. Again, if one of our pieces of equipment breaks or if one of our, our men can't be there, I can call the, co or call the highway department and they can help get somebody out here or help fix that equipment very quickly, very rapidly. So from that standpoint, it's, it's fantastic. The operators might not even know what even happened. All they know is that the runway was clear, the grasses were cut, the, the FAA administrative uh, mandates were complied with, the uh, approaches were all maintain and are on operating, they may never know that all those things behind the scenes got done. But I think that's where we're going to see this, the greatest advantage of being with the highway department. All the things you might not notice. So. Outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding overview. Well, if this is your first impression of Tom Boyer, I'm sure it's a positive one and you can see what we saw at the interview table. He really has hit the ground running and of course because of his outstanding background and experience has such a good command of this. But what I'm just personally impressed with as our first TV8 interview is how much he's really gotten a handle on the airport and, and all the good work that's ensued and just his command of it in his first 41 <laughs> days or so on the job. So Tom, thank you for your time today and an thank excellent you. overview. We look forward to having you back. Great, thank you. And until then, as you know, every month we'll bring a new program to you. Next month we're going to be interviewing our HR director, Mike Collard. Mike's been real busy with developing policies and procedures ever since the state really changed the rules of the game with um, human resource type um, procedures, policies to follow, whether you're a bargaining unit or not. As you know, there's been a lot of changes, and Mike's going to be here to talk about that very good work. So again, until then, on behalf of Chairman Roger Destruti and myself and the full county board, thanks for joining us.